Rad. Hello, Jimmy. Thank God it's Friday. Thank God it's Friday. Sure. Well, the U.S. job data has hit the wires just about now. So what are the numbers saying? Is it in line with expectations? No, they are slightly different than what economists had forecast. Uh, during the month of April, uh, 75,000 jobs were created in the United States and the expectations was a creation of 185,000 jobs. So significantly fewer jobs were created in the U.S. than what economists had anticipated. And if we take into consideration that the previous month, in the month of April, 260, around about uh, 260,000 jobs uh, had been created, then this shows that there has been a significant slowdown in job creation in the United States. Also, the uh, hourly wages increase is a bit slower than what had been ex anticipated, 0.2%. Percent uh, is the increase. The prediction was 0.3 percent. So a little bit slower performance on the labor market of the United States than what uh, you, in, uh, you know economists had in their forecast. Okay. Well, uh, back in Europe where you are, more doom and gloom for the economy. Now, German exports contracted in April. Industrial uh, uh, production, of course, in Germany also weaker. And the German Bundesbank, that's the reserve bank of the country, has lowered its economic growth projection for the year. What is the impact of all of these on the market? You know, the impact is more in terms of sentiment and not so much in terms of prices. Look at the performance of the German share index DAX. It's um, zigzag side, uh, sideways movement, slightly on the upside. There's a little bit of, uh, you know, uh, how shall I describe this? A little bit of a damper a couple of minutes ago when those jobs numbers came in from the United States. But overall, the equity market here in Frankfurt is holding up pretty well which doesn't mean that sentiment is holding up pretty well. Of course, that data you talked about, you know, German exports declining by 3.7% uh, during the month of April, while the prediction by economists was a decline by only 0.9%, so the decline there is much, much stronger than what had been anticipated is, of course, bad news for the real economy here in Germany. Why is the market not reacting so negatively? It has mainly to do with the speculation on central banks. Remember how yesterday we talked about uh, the European Central Bank keeping interest rates where they are, where mm -hmm. they are, and predicting that interest rates are not likely to rise here in the eurozone before. Um, the second half of 2020, that's a much longer projection of very generous monetary policies than the European Central Bank had had beforehand. Uh, and that signals to the markets, well, we can rely on cheap interest uh, rates, on cheap um, central bank money. So it is this which is basically propping up the markets. It's not positive sentiment and it's not positive data from the real economy. Okay. Now, ratings agency Fitch has downgraded the Mexican state-owned oil producer permits to junk. How much of this is due to the new tariffs the Trump administration has a slammed Mexico with? You know, I have to say, Pemex is a company that's been in trouble for quite a while. 14 years of production years are behind it. It sits on a huge amount of debt, 106.5 billion U.S. dollars. And a lot of this debt is actually denominated in U.S. dollars. So it is, of course, facing more of a problem after the depreciation of the Mexican currency, the peso, which has fallen to the lowest level in five months. And this is, of course, where, you know, the new tariffs that the Trump administration or Donald Trump himself is threatening Mexico with come into play because they are the reason for this strong depreciation of the Mexican currency, the peso. So, of course, uh, investors, large ratings agencies are concerned not only about Mexico itself, but also about the large state-owned oil company Pemex in Mexico. And I also have to say, you know, this 
uh, the fact that it's state owned, state owned is uh, also something positive for the company. Moody's, the other large ratings agency, says that if the company didn't have an assumed government guarantee, the standalone rating would be seven levels into high yield territory. High yield, of course, is just a nicer word for junk. So, uh, if, so without the country's backing, without the Mexican state's backing, Pemex's uh, debt would really, really be junk. Hmm. All right, Conrad, thank you so much for your time. It's been a great week with you. So I can rightly say, thank God it's Friday now. Enjoy the rest <laughs> of the weekend. And in Asia, stocks advanced on Friday following a positive de following positive developments overnight on U.S.-Mexico negotiations, while investors digested recent comments from major central bank chiefs. The Nikkei 225 in Japan rose 0.53 percent to close at 20,884.71. The topics. Index also advanced 0.49 percent to finish its trading day at 1,550. In Australia, the ASS 200 gained 0.95% to close at 6,443.9. And of course, um, the Cospi rose 0.16% to end its trading day at 2,072.33. Markets in China and Hong Kong were closed on Friday for a holiday. And in the U.S., stock index futures were higher on Friday as Wall Street looks set for a fifth straight day of gains amid hopes of progress on trade talks between the U.S. and Mexico. At around 5.30 a.m. Eastern Time, Dow futures were up 82 points and indicated a positive open of around 99 points, while the S&P 500 and Nasdaq also gained. Investors will also be keeping a close eye to the latest non-farm payrolls out of the U.S. today. Markets will be monitoring Friday's ongoing talks after stocks reached their high on Thursday on reports that the U.S. was considering delaying the imposition of a 5% tariff on Mexican imports, which is set to take effect on Monday. Meanwhile, April's wholesale trade data is due at 10 a.m. Eastern Time, and consumer credit figures will be published at 3 p.m. There are no corporate earnings releases of note. And away from the equities market, back here, uh, Nigeria posted a trade surplus of 831.62 billion naira in the first three months of 2019, as the country's total foreign trade jumps 2.50% to 8.24 trillion naira. Data released on Friday by the National Bureau of Statistics shows Nigeria's total trade figure for first quarter of 2019 beats the same quarter of 2018 by 7.52%. And Ethiopia, Africa's top coffee producer, is expected to export a record high 4 million 60 kg bags of coffee in 2019-2020 as yields improve and the area dedicated to coffee farming uh, increase. Production of coffee is expected to rise to 7.35 million tons in 2019-2020, a 1.4% increase from the 2018-2019 season. Exports account for just over half of overall production and are forecast to grow 0.5% in 2019-2020 from the previous year to reach 4 million bags. Coffee is Ethiopia's most important export. Exporters in the country are facing increased regulation with the government banning several exporters in recent months for defaulting on their contracts and hoarding beans. After the break, we'll look at the latest from the South African market to stay with us. <laughs> 